boys and girls, it's so good to be back with you. Are you ready to get started? Are you ready? I can't hear you. I'm going to count down from five, four, three, two, one. Are you ready? Are you? Hey, speaking of getting ready, there are a lot of things we have to be ready for in our life, aren't there? We have to get ready for school and get ready for church and get ready for going to our practices. I have one more for you though. This last one is probably the most important thing that you can be ready for. See if you can guess it. Did you get that boys and girls? What do you think I was doing? Yeah, those are great guesses. Do you want to know what the answer is? The answer is... You're going to have to wait until our story is over. Boo-hoo! I know, it's sad, but you won't have to wait too long. But first, before we hear our story, let's do our worship song. I like making music. was awesome. I saw those dance moves. Way to go. Well, let's look at our big Bible story for today. Our big Bible story is Paul and Silas in prison. So in the Bible, in the book of Acts, Paul learned about the best news ever. The news that Jesus is God's son. Paul was so excited about the news that he wanted to tell everyone about it, even if it got him in big trouble. And by big trouble, I mean big trouble, really big. That might sound a little bonkers to you, but that's how important it was to Paul to tell everyone about the good news of Jesus's love. Paul and his buddy Silas traveled all over telling people how to be saved from their sins. They traveled this way to tell people that Jesus died for them. And then they traveled that way to tell people that Jesus died for them. A lot of people were happy to hear the news, but not everyone. One day they were grabbed and taken to the town's judges and 
angry crowd gathered around Paul and Silas. Hmm, I'm going to need an angry crowd. So can you guys say, err, when I say angry crowd? Let me hear you. Err. Nice job. Okay, I'm going to continue with the story. The angry crowd, err, joined in the attack on Paul and Silas. The angry crowd, err, demanded that they be punished for teaching these new things about Jesus. So the judges ordered that Paul and Silas be whipped and then be put in chains and put into the deepest part of the prison. At around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns in their jail cell. And everyone in the jail listened to them. Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake that shook the entire prison and everyone in it. It was so powerful that the prison doors flew wide open and the chain shook free from the prisoner's legs. When the prison guard felt the earthquake, he woke up and he ran to the prison cells. When he saw that the doors were wide open, he freaked out. Whoa! He was sure that all of the prisoners had escaped. But just when he thought his life was going to be over, he heard a voice calling out. And it was Paul. And he yelled to the guard that everyone was still there. The guard was so relieved, he immediately fell to his knees and he asked Paul and Silas how he could be saved from his sin. Wow, do you think Paul and Silas were ready to tell the guard how to be saved? Absolutely, of course they were. They were always ready. So let's see what they said to the guard. So can you guys open your Bibles to Acts 16, 31 and 32, and let's see what was said. Believe in the Lord Jesus, then you and everyone living in your house will be saved. They spoke the word of the Lord to him, and they also spoke to all the others in his house. So on that day, the guard and his entire family were filled with joy, and they all became believers in God and were baptized that night. The next morning, Paul and Silas were released from jail. Nothing could stop them from telling others about Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? So let's look at our questions, boys and girls. For the younger kids, what was your favorite part of this story? And what kind of things do you think Paul and Silas told the guard about Jesus? And for you older kids, what do you think this story teaches us about God? If you were Paul or Silas, what would you have told the guard when he asked how to be saved? So go ahead and talk with your parents about these questions. So always be ready. Whoa, wasn't that story amazing? Angry crowds, prison, chains, enormous earthquakes. The most amazing part of the story was that Paul and Silas were ready to do. They were ready to go. When the guard came to the door, they told the guard, what was it? God loves you. So that's what I was doing earlier when the guard asked them, asked them how to be saved. Paul and Silas didn't have to look at their parents. They didn't have to look it up. They didn't have to Google it. They were ready to give the guard an answer that God loved the guard and wanted to save him from his sins. In fact, that's exactly what Peter said for us to do in the Bible. So let's look at 1 Peter together. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you about the hope you have. And that's from 1 Peter 3, 15. 
So boys and girls, how about you? Are you ready to give an answer to people who ask you about Jesus? It's the most important thing we could possibly be ready to do. So this is us and this is God. And God loves us and wants us to, and wants to be with us. But there's a problem. Sometimes we make bad choices. We lie, we cheat, we steal, we think bad things, and those things are called sin. And when we sin, it separates us from God because God is perfect and we can only be with God if we are perfect too. No matter how hard we try, we can never get to God on our own. No matter how good we are, we'll always fall short of being perfect and we'll always be separated from God, even after we die. But here's the good news. We might not be perfect, but Jesus was. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the punishment for our sins. And when we believe in Jesus and choose to follow him, our sins are forgiven. That means that they're wiped away. And because our sins are now gone, we can be with God forever even after we die. Isn't that a cool thing to tell others about the totally bonkers love of Jesus? And here's the best part, that you can tell that story on your own. You can tell it to people. You can tell it to your friends. You can tell it to your neighbors. You can tell it to everyone. So let's end in a word of prayer. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Dear Jesus, Thank you for this day. Help me to be ready to tell others about your love so they can love and know you too. We ask this in your name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, we've come to the end of our story. So we miss you so much and we can't wait to be back with you next week. So have a great day. Bye.